regulars at Kennedy's Lamp Post Bar came for a night of karaoke, but found chaos instead. The sheriff says Travis Jordan finished his song and wanted an encore. When he was denied, they say he pulled out an 18-inch machete he had been hiding. One bar. See what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like karaoke, man. Hey, man, um, I want to do an encore. Hey, sorry, man. It's a list. Bunch of people have been waiting. Um, you had your turn. Um, we're just going to bring the next person up. Just like you were the next person after the person before you. We're just going to do that thing again, except it's going to be somebody else this time. And it's just like that turns into fucking like a deadly situation. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we can't do karaoke anymore. That's the only logical right yeah, exactly Band no no easter egg hunts no karaoke no uh car shows no peewee football get rid of all of it yeah i mean yeah if if if, if you let if we let y'all gliders figure it out you gliders that's what y'all would propose um it is i mean that's how fucking retarded white people are <laughs> i mean it's just i, I this is this is why because here's the thing, okay. This guy, he did that, right? Now think about it. He has a machete. You have to think about that. Follow me here. He has a machete, right? So that's the weapon he has. Had he not fucked up the party and like everything went out, there would have probably been a shooting that night. So someone else would have probably shot somebody. That night. So like it's just like you're dealing with too many people that are impulsive, man. And it's like something got is bound to go wrong. He said, but I got lyrics to drop. <laughs> yeah, this guy is, um, this is, it's, yeah. The sheriff says Travis Jordan finished his song and wanted an encore. When he was denied, they say he pulled out an 18 inch machete he had been hiding. One bar goer tells us he was showing up here to the parking lot that night when he saw the end of that scene unfolding. A whole bunch of cops and a guy in handcuffs. I didn't, I didn't know what happened until just now, actually. An employee at the bar was able to get the large blade away from Jordan without anyone getting hurt. That's pretty freaking wild, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm pulling out a machete in a bar, especially for like drunk people. People here say they've seen Jordan at the bar before. It was crazy because I saw him earlier before he came to the bar. And um, I didn't think he was going to bring the machete to the bar. You know this guy? Yeah, he lives in my complex. The sheriff's office posted this photo and says the machete-wielding singer was extremely intoxicated and told deputies he needed the weapon on him to, quote, stay alert. Sheriff Ivy adding that Jordan was allowed to sing all he wanted in their jail. In Brevard County, Connor Hansen, Fox 35. Did they say he gonna sing in a jail? <laughs> Jeez. He was released from prison two years ago. Now Crosley Green may go back to prison for a murder he says he did not commit. Fox 35's Marie Edinger explains why this is happening now. Crosley Green was convicted in 1990 of murdering a man named Charles Flynn in Titusville. He spent 32 years behind bars, including 19 on death row, through all of which he was able to keep a spotless record. He's been out of prison for two years now on house arrest with an ankle monitor. But now even that taste of freedom is being stripped away. We are still optimistic because we believe that uh, justice will be done. During their initial homicide investigation, police wrote in their notes they believe Green was not responsible for the murder, but that the victim's girlfriend might be. That evidence was never turned over to Green's lawyers at the time, which is why he was finally allowed out of prison in 2021, a wrongful conviction, the court said. But a judge in an appeals court ruled the police notes wouldn't have made a difference in the case and said Green will have to turn himself back in by April 17th of this year. His main concern is with his family. Um, his family obviously is devastated. Um, you know. Yeah, I, I think this guy's done 32 years. If some man kills somebody nowadays, they're going to get like fucking, you know what I'm saying? These son teens out here wreck, wreaking havoc and getting two years. 
getting fucking five years. This guy's done 32 years. Man, let this fucking guy go. I mean, like, I'm, 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 I'm not in favor of locking this guy back up. He's done 32 years on a homicide. And said Green will have to turn himself back in by April 17th of this year. His main concern is with his family. Um, his family obviously is devastated. Um, you know, since Crosley has been out of prison, it has u- reunited his entire family in a way that's been beautiful and miraculous to see. His lawyers tried a last-ditch effort, asking Governor Ron DeSantis for clemency and asking the parole board to let Green free. Nothing worked. And the Monday after next, Green will once again find himself locked up, away from family for a crime he says he didn't commit. Uh, The fight for his freedom continues. Um, It's by no means over. Uh, We're going to continue to pursue every avenue we can uh, to see that justice is done in this case and see that that Crosley gets to walk in in true freedom. Marie Edinger, Fox 35. What do you think, Vishen? Oh, Johnny. Let, let him go, man. Keep him free. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean, that guy did 32 years. He would never get a sentence like that nowadays. For just killing like a guy, I gotta, I gotta find. He he was on death row, so I gotta kind of like get the circumstances behind it. But I don't really feel like it. I don't have time. But so it definitely like, been a murder. He definitely did a murder. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was something heinous. Um. Okay, we got a glider here, man. The Fox 35 update now. This man is now under arrest, accused of leaving the scene of a deadly crash in January. Police say Albert Ayala and his girlfriend got into a fight while driving down I-4 near Orange Blossom Trail. Police say his girlfriend jumped out of the car and died. Ayala turned around but then crashed into another vehicle. That's when police say he took off. He's also charged with driving with a suspended license. God damn, man. Yeah, rough day, man. Sounds uh, like massive hey, under was, the influence. Hey, man, if I was drugs. his girlfriend fuck, jumping out of a car, dude, I would have fucking got some cinder blocks tied around my ankles and jumped into the sea. Yeah, this is, this is fucked up. We got a mall shooting in Philadelphia. And with new information on a triple shooting inside a Newcastle County mall this past weekend. Yeah, just about 48 hours ago, a teenager opened fire at Christiana Mall, shooting three people and sending shoppers fleeing for their lives. Today, we heard from more of those witnesses. Plus, we got our first look at those believed to be responsible for the violence. Action News reporter Becca Hendrickson is live in Newark now with a follow to this story. Becca. Sarah and Brian, police say all three of these suspects are teenagers causing mass panic in the mall. One of them opened fire after the teens started a fight in the food court. It sent people running for their lives. New surveillance video shows three suspects who police say are behind a shooting at Christiana. Mall. <laughs> they just hey, look time to leave the mall. Yeah, they just look bad to the boat. But here's the problem, though. Philadelphia, a place like that, the mall would be teeming with them. Yeah, and then you just never go to the mall ever again. <laughs> you just you just let it fill up with them, and then you just burn it down. <laughs> That's the best case scenario. Yeah, man. Wow. That's a rough-looking bunch, man. People running for their lives. New surveillance video shows three suspects who police say are behind a shooting at Christiana Mall Saturday night. Police say the three teenagers started a fight with an 18-year-old victim who was leaving the mall's food court around 6.45 p.m. The victim's friends jumped in. Police say that's when one of the suspects pulled out a gun and shot the 18-year-old and his 16-year-old friend in the torso and lower body. Another 18-year-old standing outside on the sidewalk was also shot. When everybody started running, I left my keys and my wallet and my computer on the counter. Sage the Malor was. What the fuck would you do in there, Sage? <laughs> the fuck was she doing there with her fucking laptop? With her, so she was trying to do some studying. You know, 
probably like Panera, maybe Starbucks, maybe I don't know. Trying to do some work, get some work done. No, man, you forfeited that. Man, <laughs> you voted for. You voted for Biden, man. You forfeited all that. She's got no idea how the world works. I, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to these chicks and they just have no fucking clue what they're doing. Yeah. She's concerned if the police treat these guys well. That's her main concern. Make sure the police don't um put the cuffs on too tight or don't, you know, harass the wrong son man. Because make sure that they get the exact son man who did it and not one other son man is even questioned or asked any questions. Computer on the counter, Sage Similar was in the Apple store when she heard the shot. She called her mom in a panic. Sheer terror, um, because you imagine the worst. Um, you don't understand what's going on, nor did she. She ran for her life as other shoppers hid in stores, terrified any one of them could be hit by a bullet. We couldn't get in my car, we had nowhere to go, so we were running, and we don't know like what's happening or like what exit or they're gonna come out of if they're gonna run outside, so we had nowhere to run. She came back to the mall when it reopened Monday to get her laptop, wallet, and keys. Other items left behind, a single baby shoe, a diaper bag, and a stroller. A lot of these children live like this in the communities. They don't expect to come to the mall to be, sh you know, to run into a shooting at the mall. Margaret Guy led this prayer chain outside of the mall Monday, calling for an end to all gun violence. We cannot let these young teenagers or people with guns, you know, run us away from our everyday life. Now, the mall says it increased security today after the shooting. Police also say that all three of the victims were taken to the hospital and are in stable condition. Okay. Okay. Uh, 